Hello ladies and jelly spoons, ladies, boys and ghouls. Welcome to the Game Dojo. This is 24K Movies, TV shows, video game reviews. I'm your host, The Game Ninja. This is The Game Dojo in the heart of Gamer Nation. Welcome to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is the month of October and Halloween is upon us. Yes! So there are a lot of great new endeavors that are horror, horrible, horrific, and some of them, some other H-O-R words that, uh, I don't care to use right now, but ladies and gentlemen, the other day we ended up watching uh, Salem's Lot or Jerusalem's Lot because that's the name of the town. That's why the apostrophe is at the beginning of Salem's Lot for 2024. Uh, HBO Max uh, exclusive. Um, okay, so ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, I am going to let you watch the trailer. Then I'll come back and I'll unpack it for you. The good, the bad, the ugly, what I liked, what I didn't like. And now I know you can't not compare it to the original Salem's Lot adaptation. And I know Toby Hooper is going to be on a lot of people's minds. But I'm going to give you an honest thought and review from the movie that I saw. I have some gripes. That's true. But anyway... I'll unpack it for you when you come right back, but let's check out the trailer for it. Where are you? Annie, where are you? I'm so <laughs> This town is dying. Because something terrible was born. Something between Hubie e. Marston in that house. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. I hate not comparing it to the original because the original miniseries is absolutely awesome. Even the 90s adaptation that came out on like TNT or TBS or something like that, I forget which one it was, was great. Absolutely great. There were some gripes back then, so there's some gripes now. Now let's talk about what this re-adaptation did correctly. Number one. The cinematography, beautiful. The eyes, I, I'm glad you guys got that correctly because the glowing eye thing was one of the biggest freaky, disturbing imageries from the original Salem's Lot. Great job on that. The master vampire Barlow looking like Nosferatu. I would have changed some things, but I'm glad you didn't go with the uh, rat teeth. So that was pretty good. He still looked creepy and scary. Uh, so as did the vampires that you showed us in this was really good. Um, I did like a lot of the scenes. Uh, some of the jump scares you could definitely see coming. Uh, unfortunately, if you watch the original adaptation of Salem's Lot from Stephen King's books, the books are always better. Let's get that out the window. Okay, whatever. Uh, the original adaptation did it a little bit better, especially with developing the plot of the town and the people. The town itself became another character in the story, as well as the people. So when you watch the older rendition of this, which there's... Look, you can watch the new version. I'm not saying Jerusalem's Lot is not good. It is good. But there, the original adaptations from like the original ones from the 80s and the 90s... The uh, series, the miniseries, they they explore a lot better because there's a lot more episodes. There's a lot to cover that they cram into one movie. 
They could have made Salem's Lot a TV series or a three-part series like they do with a lot of Stephen King movies. I don't know why they didn't do that because there was a lot that they crushed in here. I mean, things hit the door and go pretty fast. Like, in the original series, I I'll tell you what I mean. In the original series, most of the time, people don't know that they're vampires. Like, it takes a while for people to catch on and realize that it's vampires. In this movie, it's just like, it's vampires, dude. And they're just like, oh, it's vampires? All right. What do we know about vampires? We're already there. Like, there's also some scenes where it should be truly horrific for the characters involved. And the characters themselves aren't as scared as they should be. Let me tell you something. <clears throat> if something with glowing eyes and strength like that jumps out of the dark and grabs you... That's extremely terrifying. That should be a full-on pee-on-yourself jump scare. There should be fright. Like when the woman is in the morgue, the medical examiner, and the thing is the sheet is over the vampire's face. You can see the sheet pulling and the fangs ripping through the sheets. She's not frightened enough for somebody who didn't believe in vampires and now there's one trying to suck your brain your brain meats out like you should have more genuine fear the original series captured that real fear there is a lot of disturbing imagery in this one of the things i'm, I'm gonna get kicked in the teeth for this i know it so um yeah go ahead you can put it in the comments i'm okay one of the things I'm going to get kicked in the teeth about is I did not like the little kid having all the power. I did not, did not like this 11 and a half year old kid being the savior and the fighter in this entire movie, bro. I, I did not like that. I'm sorry. Look, the original one had kids. I get it. Kid vampires, they're scary and things like that. But the kid in this movie, they made like Van Helsing, like... This kid was going into houses by himself, breaking down doors himself, taking out vampires himself. He put his friend down. Like, a very mature plot line for an older character, not for a child. Because for with children, there's only so much you can do. Then again, it's a Stephen King book, and I know how Stephen King is with children. Having said that, it had bullies in it, just like every Stephen King book and movie and adaptation he has to have bullies there has to be that mild undertone of racism which was is here as well um <sighs> barlow's protector in the tv series was much stronger and a much more formidable adversary than somebody who got taken out by an 11 year old kid with a golf club or a poker but the kid took out barlow's protector barlow's protector who was a formidable foe and strong and almost unable to be killed in the original Salem's Lot was <sighs> hey, it's, it's, yeah I ain't gonna eat the kids lunch too much because he was the coolest thing about the film everybody else I could give or take except for <clears throat> the main character I kept looking at him and I'm like this dude looks familiar he kept making these faces he kept he kept these little speeches and things of talking to people and I was just like bro like, I know this guy. Like, I know this guy. <clears throat> so I said to the nightmare creature, because she was watching it with me, I'm like, he kind of reminds me of Bill Pullman. Like, a lot. Like, his face, his mannerisms. Like, he reminds me of Bill Pullman. Then I was like, I wonder what Bill Pullman would have been like in this movie, even though he's a little bit older. Like, I would love to have seen him in here. Only to find out that the main character in here is Bill Pullman's son. It's actually his son. And... It makes me feel amazed and weird that I've seen movies with uh, Patrick Schwarzenegger, Arnold Schwarzenegger's adult son, Bill Pullman's adult son. Like, it makes me feel old as hell that I knew their fathers and their fathers when they were movie stars, Lone Star and Spaceballs, Commando and Predator. And now I'm watching the second generation of them, their children who are in their 30s and 20s, their grown men. And I'm watching them in movies, and I'm just like, I've watched two legacies of this family act, and it just makes me feel incredibly old. But having said that, Bill Pullman, your son, your son killed this. Um, <clears throat> what's his name? 
<clears throat> Jack Burton. What is his name? Oh my God, Jack Burton. What is his name? I cannot think of his name in real life. Um, what is his name? Goldie Hawn is his wife. What is his... Oh my God, I cannot think of his name right now. <sighs> he was R.G. McCready in the thing. How do I not know? Kurt Russell. <sighs> Had to search the brain. See, the brain meat is working on, on outdated software. So it was like... Doo -doo 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 -doo. I said that little file folder flowing up in the air, going to the other side, going up, going to the other side. Kurt Russell's son, I saw in um, the uh, Godzilla TV series. Like, there is so... I'm watching the next generation of actors from the actors that I used to watch and their children now acting and it makes me feel damn old i know i'm old but it makes me feel like dirt old and i'm like that's your son full grown wow <laughs> anyway um i did like it kind of felt like and y'all gonna go with me on this because there was a point of this movie towards the end where Bill Pullman's son and the and the main uh, eleven year old child in this movie were fighting vampires, and I was like, it's kind of like Whistler and Blade. Whistler meant Blade when he was a child. Like, if this kid gets bit, is he going to become like Whistler and Blade? Like, is in some weird universe, is this the origin story of Whistler and Blade? Is this like how it got started? And we're gonna find out this kid got bit, and now Bill Pullman's going to teach him and teach him how to fight the thirst, like. <laughs> I went off into another category with this, but that's where my mind spun because we're in a world where, believe it or not, it could happen. It could really happen. Whether you want it to or not, whether you think of it or not, it could really happen. This is the world we're in right now. It could really happen. You never know. But uh, the movie gave us an end that I was... They just made this kid, this 11-year-old kid, and the funny part is, like, his parents... All the adults in the town, everybody else were like destroyed by these super vamped out vampires. And this kid was the most formidable warrior against them. Like this kid's body count with vampires had to be like, hold on. He got that one. He got his friend. He got Bar he got Barlow's bodyguard. He got the little John that was there. He went into that house and got that John. And then he got the other drill. So this kid's body count was like at six. This kid's body count was like like six. Compared to everybody else. I think the only other person, Bill Pullman's uh, son, killed like three. Two or three. Two or three. Because the one in the morgue, they just put a cross up and it disappears. I don't know if it was dead or not. We They don't give us that. Anyway. So, watching this movie, unfortunately having the benefit of seeing both miniseries from the 80s and the 90s, I drew a lot of conclusions and a lot of comparisons, which I didn't want to do. But this movie is good. It stands on its own as a great horror movie and a great rendition. Uh, I got to go back and look and see if the original movies were in a town called Jerusalem because I thought they were like Salem from like Salem, Massachusetts or something like that in Salem's Lot. I don't remember it being apostrophe at the beginning of the S for uh, Salem's Lot like the new one has like the posture at the beginning that's because in the movie we're told it's the town of jerusalem so it's jerusalem's lot salem's lot like they leave that off but anyway the movie goes really quick and then you end up to the point where basically the entire town is turned and it's just down to like three human beings left and of the three human beings the girl gets bitten and taken so it's just two human beings and then that's another thing um you guys know my biggest pet peeve is unrealistic reactions and stupid reactions and stupid decisions yes this movie has it and it has it in spades first of all you know when somebody's bit you know they're pretty much gone you save the uh the lady morgue attendant because she was able to give you that that whatever that was, that rabies thing and other stuff, and that just worked for her because it was right then and there and she had it. This girl was bitten. You drove with her. You moved with her. She went in and started reacting to the church. You know she's gone. You know she's not there. But no, you going to follow her when she stands up and vamps out and runs out. You're going to run out after her like an idiot. And don't give me that whole thing. He was in love. He just met her days ago. 
He slept with her once. Like, look, guys, there are pretty women and there are women that you love and there's women you fall in love with. I get it. He didn't know her and solidify enough of a love to be running after her full vampire, especially when you know there's no changing back, especially since you know that it's pretty much ball game if she catches you. So then when he tangled with her and fought for her, he still couldn't do it. When he found her in the trunk, he still couldn't do it. And that just, it irks me because it's the stupidity. The, two, the stupidity in people is astounding when it comes to horror movies, horror movies and thought process. Because I'm like, people are not that stupid. I know some people as a collective can be. But you have like a fight or flight instinct. You have basic instincts. Like these things should kick in. Like, I... <sighs> And I got to say something. I don't know whoever made this movie, if you're familiar with the laws of physics. But we got to talk about how daylight and sunshine works. Bruh, when the sun comes up to when the sun goes down, it's not 25 minutes. I'm sorry. I know you jump around back and forth here and there, but the sun sets in Jerusalem's lot faster than a hot pocket can be cooked and that just ain't right that just ain't right and it's i can see if you did it with one scene but you do it quite frequently quite frequently and the change from night to day the dissolves from night to day what are you doing it makes me wonder if there's another version of this that we haven't seen to give you an example they go back looking for um uh, the house of the guy who originally saw this going down. And we know he's dead. We saw him die. The little 11-year-old kid killed Barlow's protector and got out, even though he got bit. Whatever. It is what it is. So as they pull up to the house, you see the vampires on the roof. And he's like, look, there's two vampires on the roof. And they both look and see the vampires on the roof. And then they drive off. And I'm like, well, you guys going to have to find some place tonight to stay because they're going to come after you. They're looking at you. They saw you see them. So there's no place to stay in town. So, like, you guys are going to have to go somewhere and put it up, like, board it up with crosses. And you wonder how they survived that night. But guess what? We don't get that because daylight next day. And I'm like, wait a minute. You just, they, so the vampires let you just drive away and sleep it off in the house? Like, where'd you stay? Where'd you go? Were there crosses? Like, Not only time they do that. They do that a lot in here. All right, I want you guys to go. We're going to separate and meet at the church. It's the safest place in town. I got to go get my parents. I got to go get so-and-so. I got to go get so-and-so. I got to get so-and-so. So let's split up, gang, and let's meet right back there. It's morning. Morning. Five minutes later, the sun is setting and nobody's made it to the church. Not the priest. Nobody. Nobody's made it to the church. The sun is setting. It was just morning. Now the sun is setting. He walks into the house of the 11-year-old boy to try to explain to the parents, the father, try to explain to the parents that uh, vampires are real and that they're coming to kill them tonight. It's daylight. Two minutes later, there's a knock at the door. The door opens, it's midnight, pitch black, fog, hounds, bats in the end. How? Do you, do you guys know how physics work? That is not how the sun goes. That's not how daylight goes. Like, what? And they do it a lot in this movie. So much to the point where I'm just like, I guess the vampires control the sun in this town. How quick it sets, how quick it comes back up. Because there's a point where they pull out Barlow's coffin and they throw it on the ground. The sun is shining. Blue skies. Sun is shining. And as they're trying to pry open his coffin, the sunlight is fading. Like pitch black the movie. Like the planets are setting over the suns for a lasting darkness. And it's just rolling second by second. I'm like, the sun doesn't set that fast. Like... I know for the purposes of this movie, you made it set that fast, but the laws of physics cease to exist, I guess, in Sa Jerusalem's lot, Salem's lot, because I'm like, 
the sun doesn't work like that. You you guys get that, right? The sun doesn't work like that. It's insane. And then the funny part is, is the sun is still in the sky, right? It's just like above the trees, but the sun is still in the sky. And the vampire starts coming out the trunks to attack people. I thought sunlight kills them. But apparently, I guess shade, they're okay. Like the shade of the driving screen, they're they're fine. Sun does nothing to them. You know, they can come out in daylight, you know, as long as there's some shade. And of course, here's this 11-year-old kid who gets the idea to drive a car, never driven a car his entire life, but he drives so well to drive into the driving screen and knock the screen down and roast all the vampires. Well, you know, I got to change his body count now because he killed like 30 people in that driving movie theater. So this kid has like 36, 36, we'll give him 40. Let's round up to 40. This kid has a body count of 40. He's 11 years old. This is the savior of this movie. He's Blade. He's Blade. He's young Blade. He's young Blade. For the purposes of this movie and the way that I can get through it, he's Blade and Bill Pullman's son is Whistler. That's where we're going. This, he's Blade. That's Whistler. This is the Blade origin story. This is probably the best Blade movie we're going to get new coming out unless Wesley's involved. So this is, it's not Jerusalem's Lot or Salem's Lot. This is Blade Origin. <laughs> this is Blade Origin. <laughs> you know what's really funny? If they called this Blade Origin, this movie would be phenomenal throughout everybody's mouth. If they call this Blade Origin, it would be phenomenal through everybody's mouth. People would just be like, I can see that. Like, all you had to do was twist one little thing where this little kid got, like, bitten but not changed but developed some of their powers. Because how how does an 11-year-old kid take down all the vampires in this movie? How? This, he's a kid. This is not This is not the Lost Boys. He's not Edgar Allan Frog Brother. He's not a Goonie, like... I have to give this kid respect. He's Blade. He's Blade. I have to give this kid respect. He's Blade. He's Blade. It's the only way I can rationalize it. He's Blade. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, it is a fun time to watch in the month of October if you're looking for a vampire movie. I know there's a bunch more they have out. I heard like the Radleys is out. Uh, there's another one like uh, Little Bite or Little Bites or something like that. There's a bunch of other ones we're going to check out. Uh, they on the list. Uh, we're going to see what kind of vampire movies they got coming down the aisle. Uh, Salem's Lot, Jerusalem's Lot, a.k.a. Blade Origin. It was, a good, it was a good film to watch. Like, for none other reason than not killing off this little black kid. And I know it sounds bad. <laughs> He's Blade. He's Blade. This little kid is Blade. This little kid is Blade. I'm, I watched Blade's origin story. Um, if I refer to it as that... Maybe a lot more people will go and check it out. Like, it's Blade origin story. Like, if I tell people that, maybe a lot more people will check it out. Because I don't know too many people who saw the original Salem's Lot. And a lot of people don't have it to compare it to, which is good. Because they can watch this with unobscured goggles and just enjoy this movie for what it is. A vampire movie. A fun vampire movie. So, if you don't see it through the lens of the original two miniseries, you're going to have a better time with this one. And if you haven't seen the originals... I would recommend seeing them after you see this. Otherwise, you're going to draw comparisons and you may not like this one as much. But if you go into it thinking that it's Blade's origin story, you're going to love it. I'm telling you. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, what do we give Jerusalem's Lot, Salem's Lot, a.k.a. Blade Origin, in the game dojo? I can't give it a platinum. I can't give it a platinum just because I I live in a world where I've seen the original miniseries from the 80s and the original 90s miniseries. I've seen those. Like, I've seen better. So I can't give you the cream of the crop. Now, if this was named Blade Origin, I'd be able to give you a platinum. I'd be able to give you a platinum if this was Blade Origin. But it's not Blade Origin. It's Jerusalem's Lot. I'll give it a gold. I'll give it a gold. It's definitely higher than a copper, definitely higher than a nickel. It's not platinum status, but it's gold. It's something great to watch. If you didn't watch the original Salem's Lot, don't do it before you watch this one. I know a lot of people are like, well, I want to see the original before I see the remake. Don't do it. Don't do it. You're going to do yourself a disservice because you're going to hate this one. Don't do that. Watch this one with unobscured goggles. See if you like it. 
Call it Blade Origin. It's going to catch on. <laughs> um, but yeah, watch them all in succession after this. And you'll have a better time. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, from the Game Dojo, I'm your host, The Game Ninja, for 24K Movies, TV shows, and reviews, saying like it, see it, stream it, buy it. I don't download it. I think you can download it offline off of HBO Max for a watch later. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, check out Blade Origins. Excuse me. Salem's Lot. Excuse me. Jerusalem's Lot. And I'll check you guys out later. Thank you guys for joining me.